Ah, the GOAT debate. This is still one of the most frequently asked questions among basketball fans. MJ's an obvious choice. Some make an argument for Kobe, while others say LeBron. Well, we ain't talking about Kobe or LeBron in this one. We're doing something different, something not done often. In this video, we examine one of the biggest legends ever, Wilt Chamberlain, to see how he stacks up against Jordan in the conversation of greatest of all time, and it's not what you think. The truth is that it's tough to compare the two greats considering they played in different eras, and Jordan and Chamberlain played two completely different positions. Also, it's impossible to identify who made a bigger defensive impact because blocks and steals were not recorded during Chamberlain's time. In addition, all defensive teams existed only toward the end of his career. So without mentioning defense, let's compare these two greats to see who the GOAT is. First, we'll look at both of them as scorers. Wilt scored 31,419 points in 1,045 games over 14 NBA seasons. He won seven consecutive scoring titles from 1960 to 1966. Wilt was an incredible scorer and he did it without physically dominating defenders like they do now. Most of his game was turnaround jump shots and the Big Dipper finger roll. Even playing under his limitations, Wilt was a potent scorer. We've all heard about the 100-point game and the absurd 50-point-per-game season. These records sound superhuman, but like with anything, it's necessary to look deeper. Let's break down Wilt's points per game into regular season, playoffs, and finals for all the seasons he played. Looking at this, it's obvious to see why most players, fans, and coaches don't consider Wilt to be the GOAT. For a player who's regarded as the most dominant player in history, he only averaged 18.6 points in the finals. Another interesting fact is that during his famed 50 points per game season, his points per game plummeted by 15 points in the playoffs and he did not make the finals that year. His points per game dropped year after year, becoming much lower in the playoffs and finals. Jordan was not only the most consistent player in NBA history, but he also performed better in the playoffs and the finals than he did during the regular season. In 1992, Jordan set the NBA Finals Series record for most points per game with 41 points per game. 30 years later, the record is still unbroken. A points per game of 33.4 in the playoffs and a record points per game of 41 in a final series is far more spectacular than a points per game of 50 in the regular season because MJ elevated his game when it was winning time. Wilt scored 50 points 118 times in total. But how many 50-point games did he have in the playoffs? Four. Only four. So who holds the record for most 50-plus games in the playoffs? Jordan with eight. Jordan's scoring consistency is unmatched. He won 10 scoring titles and a career average of 30.12 points per game, the highest in NBA history. And for that, he's widely considered as the greatest scorer the league has ever seen. Even though Wilt is second on that list with 30.07 points per game, MJ still has the edge. Now, let's look at both of them as passers. Chamberlain has been criticized for being a selfish player, but his offensive production was roughly identical to Michael Jordan's throughout their careers. Both of them led the NBA in scoring on numerous occasions, but Chamberlain was perceived as selfish, whereas Jordan was not. Is there anyone who believes Michael Jordan didn't want to be the NBA's leading scorer? Would Jordan have been willing to lower his scoring average by 10 points or more to delegate to his teammates? No. But Wilt was expected to do that at times in his career. For some who didn't know, Wilt was the only center in league history to lead in assists, and he did it averaging 8.6 assists a game which is higher than any season Nikola Jokic has ever had. Wilt's career assists per game average was 4.4, just .9 less than Michael Jordan's career average, which is 5.3. This number is even more impressive when we consider Wilt never handled the ball up court. For Wilt to get an assist, he needed someone to pass the ball to him first or for him to get the rebound. MJ, on the other hand, was never paired with a genuine point guard. Jordan divided the ball handling duties with John Paxson, Ron Harper, Craig Hodges, BJ Armstrong, and others. In this situation, Jordan frequently took the ball up court himself. Given that Wilt was a center, Wilt's assists per game should make you realize how selfless he was when he's averaging almost five assists per game as a center in his era. So in terms of passing, let's give this one to Wilt. In terms of rebounds, let's look at Wilt first. Wilt had no rival in this category except for Bill Russell's 22.5 rebounds per game. Wilt had 23,924 total rebounds and 22.9 rebounds per game average. 
Chamberlain's rebound per game career average is more than twice as high as most of the league's modern centers. Reduce his rebounds by half and his career average of 11.45 rebounds per game would still top the rebound averages of some of the league's best rebounders. Charles Barkley 11.69 RPG, Moses Malone 12.26 RPG, Artis Gilmore 12.29 RPG, and Dennis Rodman 13.1 RPG are the only players that played in the Jordan era to have more than half of Wilt's rebounds per game. When we talk about Chamberlain's rebounding, we're not just comparing him to Michael Jordan, we're comparing him to the best rebounders in NBA history. So this one's easy, Wilt is the greatest rebounder in NBA history. We're done with scoring, passing, and rebounding. What's next? What other factors matter in order for one to be called the GOAT? How about clutchness? Have you ever wondered or asked yourself how clutch Wilt and Jordan are? Let's start with Wilt. He may have scored 50 points per game in a season, but he was non-existent in clutch situations. The only clutch play of Wilt we found is the clutch block he made during the final 33 seconds of Game 7 against the Bulls in 1973. A 36-year-old Wilt with bad knees blocked a jumper that would have put the Bulls up by two possessions. Now for Jordan, compared to all other NBA players, not just Wilt, Jordan has made more clutch shots and performed better in crucial games. There was the 63-point game against the 1986 Boston Celtics at the Boston Garden, the game-winning shot over Craig Ello in the 1989 playoffs, the shrug game in which Jordan made six three-pointers in the first half and scored 35 points in the first half of the 1992 NBA Finals, Game 5 of the 1997 NBA Finals, the flu game, where Jordan scored 38 points including the game-winning three-pointer with 25 seconds left despite being sick, and the Game 6 of the 1998 Finals when Jordan stripped the ball from Karl Malone and proceeded to hit the foul line jump shot to win his last NBA title. That last minute of the 1998 NBA Finals showed just how clutch defensively and offensively MJ was. That shot is often considered the greatest clutch shot in NBA history. Lastly, let's talk about championships. If winning titles is a measure of greatness, Robert Ory must be in the greatest player debate too. Ory won two championships with the Houston Rockets, three with the Los Angeles Lakers, and two with the San Antonio Spurs. Jordan won six titles and Ory won seven. Does that make Robert Ory better than MJ? Of course not. How about Bill Wennington, John Sally, Luke Longley, James Edwards, and many more? No disrespect to them, but do you even know these guys? All of them are centers that won more championships than Wilt. But they're not better than Wilt. If we're going to base the GOAT debate on titles won, then the GOAT is Bill Russell because he had 11 NBA championships. So do championships still matter? Yes they matter, but aside from championship accolades, the GOAT should attain long-term individual dominance while also leading his team to victory. He should be among the very best for a very long time. He should also leave an indelible mark on the game. His influence should be at the top, like being able to inspire those who follow him by adapting or imitating his style. Clearly Jordan is the better winner over Wilt. Jordan got six and Wilt got two. Yes, both dominated the league in their primes, but MJ was more influential. Jordan was more than just a basketball player. He had an impact on American culture and society. Jordan's influence was extraordinary. Whether it was through basketball or his own brand, Jordan made everyone want to be like Mike. Michael Jordan's athletic brilliance on the court enabled him to establish himself and his brand as a cultural icon, significantly impacting the game of basketball. At the end of the day, no one can deny how great of a player Wilt is. He was fast, strong, tall, and athletic. Many of his records are unbreakable. In fact, he owns 72 NBA records. However, neither Wilt Chamberlain nor anyone else in professional basketball history can replicate or match MJ's postseason performances and awards. Michael Jordan ruled the basketball world both on and off the court. There has never been a player more trustworthy to make the final shot. MJ was the most feared athlete in the last seconds of the game, and that's a huge part of how we think about the greatest players. It's not enough that they're great, it's that they're great when they're down and everyone is watching. They take matters into their own hands when everyone is watching and they rise to the top and create sports history on their own terms. For those reasons, Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. He was a legendary scorer, and he was fearless. The most ruthless player the game has ever seen, which made him a winner.